Hi guys, my name is Adam and welcome to my new video. In this one I'm gonna take a look at a product I actually haven't covered here on this channel yet and that's the MacBook. Here I have my 13 inch MacBook Pro. I used this one for more than 2 years now. It's the 2017 non-touch bar model. Is this machine still worth it almost 3 years after being released? And how does it compare to the newest models? Let's find out in today's video. Here we go. So like I said, this is the 2017 basic MacBook Pro. This was the cheapest 2017 Pro model and I got this one because at the time I bought it there was no Retina MacBook Air just yet, so there was only 12 inch MacBook, non Retina old MacBook Air and MacBook Pro on sale. And because I wanted Retina screen and but a larger than 12 inch, then the 13 inch Pro was the obvious choice. I did not choose the touch bar model because honestly I thought it was just terribly overpriced and I also didn't need that much horsepower in my laptop. So I chose this one and I'm pretty glad I did it. Let's have a look. This 13 inch model comes with a design that Apple introduced with the 2016 Pros. It's actually pretty similar to the older MacBook Pro as it features the familiar aluminum unibody design. But its newer models are even thinner and lighter than for example the 2015 ones. This 2017 Pro is actually almost the same size and weight as the new MacBook Air, so that's definitely one of the biggest advantages of this one for me, as I need my laptop to be light because I carry it around a lot. You can see the design is pretty clean, with the exception of few screws here and unfortunately there's no glowing Apple logo anymore on this one. On the side there are just two USB-C ports and one headphone jack. And if I open it up, you can see the 13 inch retina screen with a tiny bit of bezels, the beloved MacBook Pro logo and of course the keyboard with no touch bar at the top, stereo speakers on the side of the keyboard and of course the traditional huge trackpad that is typical for all MacBooks. And that's it, very clean and simple laptop, but in my opinion the MacBooks are the best looking laptops on the market. Yes, there's not bezel-less screen or stuff like that but I'm still surprised that every other laptop maker in the world has yet to match this design. It's truly a fantastic looking piece of tech. And very durable too. Like I said, I have this one for more than two years and there's no scratches or abrasions, actually no signs of use at all. And I'm not overly protective of it, I carry it around a lot and it still holds up like this after two years. Huge props to Apple for this design. Let's talk about the screen here. It's 13 inch retina screen with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's the high quality screen just as you would expect on the retina MacBook. The resolution is so high that you cannot see individual pixels, even if you look up really close. It's definitely one of the best screens I've ever seen on a laptop, period. The colors are pretty vivid, blacks are deep and the viewing angle is pretty wide so all your friends can gather around the screen and watch a movie for example. I also use the sRGB color profile in the display settings to further enhance the saturation of the colors. The screen is definitely one of the stand points of this laptop. Of course it's not a touch screen, but you wouldn't honestly expect MacBook display to be, would you? If you buy this laptop today in 2020, 
then the screen will definitely not be an issue for you because screen on the newest 13-inch MacBook Pro is actually exactly the same as this one, so this is the best you can get in the display department, even today. One of the most praised features of the MacBooks has always been a trackpad. The Windows laptops were not able to match this for many years, and only recently the best and priciest Windows models have started to catch up in the trackpad area. This MacBook Pro does feature a huge trackpad with the force click option. That means that this piece of glass actually doesn't move when you click it, but thanks to the Taptic Engine under the trackpad, you still get the click feel. It works just as the home button on the iPhone 7 and newer. It's honestly crazy because it really feels like a click, but it's all just an illusion. This trackpad, like all the other MacBook trackpads, is very precise and it supports the fantastic multi-touch gestures, so you can use it for example in Safari to quickly go back or forward and you can also get to the multitasking switcher or even to the other desktop. It's really convenient and it works all across the macOS. As with the display, buying the newest MacBook Pro won't get you any upgrade, as newest MacBooks use the same trackpad as this one. One of the most controversial aspects of this laptop is its keyboard. This model features the second generation of the infamous butterfly switch keyboard. I already said that I'm pretty satisfied with this MacBook and I love using it so much. But over the past two years of me using it, there was this one problem. After like six or seven months of usage, I started to notice that the M key feels a little bit mushy or how else to say it, it basically had almost no key travel and it felt like it stuck. So I had to press it really hard every single time. After this, I started to experience this problem with more keys. And at that time, Apple started a free repair program to fix this particular issue. So I brought the laptop to Apple Authorized Repair Center and after a few days, I picked it up. They changed the whole keyboard and even battery, so I cannot complain at all. I was a little bit worried that this problem would repeat again but thankfully I had zero issues with the keyboard since. A lot of people don't like the typing experience on the butterfly keyboard, but honestly it's not an issue for me. I believe that the new Magic Keyboard on the 16-inch MacBook Pro and the new 2020 Air is better, but I have no problems typing on this one. And believe me, I type on it a lot. Over the past like 4 or 5 years, Apple has been killing it with the quality of the speakers in their devices and this one is no exception. When I first played a song on this laptop, I was blown away by the sound. It really feels like I had a bigger Bluetooth speakers, for example, and it's hard to believe that such a quality sound comes from these two very little speakers. But enough talking, let's hear it yourself. When it comes to connectivity, this laptop is not the best out there, as it features only two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. These are pretty fast and definitely top of the class, but sometimes I wish this 13-inch would have four ports like more pricier MacBooks do. Because I have it plugged to the power all the time at home and I also use the external SSD drive, these two ports are always occupied. But there are times when I want also to plug my iPhone or other accessory and I don't want to use a big USB hub or other dongle to do so. In these occasions the two additional ports on the other side of the laptop would be pretty nice. But yeah, I can live with two, it's definitely better than only one on the older 12-inch MacBook, that would be a real issue for me. This MacBook Pro also features a headphone jack, which is pretty rare in Apple devices nowadays, but honestly I used it like once or twice over the past two years. I mainly use the built-in speakers or my AirPods.
This MacBook Pro is powered by the 2.3 GHz Intel Core i5 CPU and it has 8 GB of RAM. The CPU is the 7th generation Intel Cable Lake one, so it's still fairly recent. This 13 inch does not feature a dedicated GPU, so there's only an integrated Intel Iris Plus 640 graphics. So what's the everyday performance of this 3 year old MacBook like? Let me tell you, it's great. macOS is perfectly optimized, so even though this model's OS was upgraded many times since purchase, it still feels brand new. Apps open instantly because of the fast SSD drive, and you can use almost everything on this device. I often use Parallels to run virtualized machines, and this device can handle it like a champ. I even edit 4K videos on this computer in iMovie or Final Cut Pro, and it's not a struggle for this machine, but obviously the exporting times are not as good as on the newest models with high-end CPU and GPU. It's a shame that the RAM on this computer is not replaceable like on the older MacBooks. The 8GB option is just fine for almost everyone, but now when I'm more and more working with the photo and video editing software, I would definitely take advantage of the 16GB option. So when I choose to buy the next MacBook, it will definitely be a 16GB one. But the CPU is just fine in my opinion, I haven't had any issue with the performance of this i5. When it comes to games, this laptop is not meant as a gaming machine at all, simply because of that integrated graphics. But I'm a big fan of strategic and building games, and these are usually not that graphically intensive, so I was curious if I could play some of these on this MacBook Pro. And it turned out that this device can actually handle some games after all. I play Hearts of Iron 4 very often, and I also play Civilization 6 on this machine, and I tried few more, and this laptop can play these games just fine, but you definitely need to tweak the graphics settings and turn off the unnecessary stuff. So yeah, this machine can do some light gaming of even newer titles, but be aware that the graphics settings should be low to play these games. And of course, just to mention, this MacBook can also play like all the games that Apple offers on their Apple Arcade service. So if you're into those types of games, you will be just fine with this MacBook, and you can even connect your Xbox One or PlayStation 4 controller for better gaming experience. This MacBook originally came with the macOS 10.12.5 Sierra pre-installed, and over the past three years it received updates to High Sierra, Mojave, and now it's running the latest version of macOS 10.15 Catalina. Apple now supports the MacBooks as old as 2012, so 8 years of support. And because this one was released in 2017, you can expect it to be supported for at least 5 more years, which is incredible. I have the latest beta version of Catalina 10.15.5 update installed, and it's running without any problems on this machine. Everything is fast and fluid, no major bugs or any other problems at this point of Catalina development. And I'm really looking forward to June, because Apple will drop the first beta of the new macOS update, and I will install it for sure to test it, so expect a video about it in the future. So, is this 13-inch MacBook Pro actually worth it in 2020? A lot of my friends were deciding whether to buy this one or the 2018 or 2019 MacBook Air. These machines are honestly very similar. With this one, you get a little brighter screen, a little bit better speakers, and the performance is a tiny bit better, but nothing major. With the Air, you get the Touch ID fingerprint scanner, T2 chip with better security, and a little bit thinner and lighter body, but again, nothing major. I think this 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro held up just fine. The design is the same as on the newer ones, except the lack of touch bar, of course. And the screen is also the same, and the performance is still fantastic for almost everyone. It can handle video editing, photo editing and more, but of course the newer MacBooks with more RAM and newer CPU 
can do these tasks just a little bit faster. But overall I'm pretty satisfied with this one. I'm glad that a butterfly keyboard works just fine after being replaced and I hope I won't have any more issues with it. And I'm excited about Apple's rumored upcoming 14 inch MacBook Pro because maybe this year I will be finally convinced to switch to the newest one, who knows. So guys, that's it for today's video. What do you think about this 13 inch MacBook Pro 2017? Do you own one or do you consider to buy one? Let me know in the comment section down below and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video, it helps me a lot. Also consider subscribing for more content like this. So until the next time, have a great day, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home if possible and see you in the next video. Bye!